Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can create this logo very easily with the principles of using fonts, typefaces, and editing them ever so slightly. This video is brought to you by logodesign.net. If you'd like to learn more about logo design, read some amazing articles, and see this video tutorial in a written format, click the link below. So generally what I do every now and then is to up my logo design game, I'll work on a brief or a brief that I found online. So I like to work on my own little passion projects just for the fun of it. So today the brief that I'm giving myself is designing a social media messaging app, something equivalent to WhatsApp. They want the logo to be a bit more modern and to be aimed more towards the young adult market of 16 to 30. And the company is called BMO. So again, this is not real, but this is what we're calling it. Today, I'm just gonna go straight into it though, because I kind of got an idea of what I want. So the first thing I always do, especially with real work, is sketch out but we're gonna do it all on the computer today. I write the name BMO down just to see how it flows. And then I go through my typeface so I could go and check out ones that I know that would work. I like Gilroy the most because it just looks more professional and I like how it looks there. But what I could do is try it by itself just to see what it would look like. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this into poppins to see what it would look like in lower caps as well. Yeah, Gilroy just looks the best. I'm gonna stick with Gilroy, and the reason being is that it's a more professional looking typeface. There are so many typefaces to choose from when it comes to logo design in general, and it's important to make sure that if you're working for a company that is modern, that you choose modern typefaces. Now, we're not just gonna give them this typeface, we're obviously gonna create an icon as well with it, and the icon idea that I have is a speech bubble in an app icon-esque way. So what we're gonna do is work on the color drag your work over here and create another copy of this. And we're gonna change this to one of these primary colors in our swatches over here. So I could change it to green. That looks a bit strange. Change it to pink. That looks better. I like the pink because it's very vibrant. And we're gonna change it to a, probably a purple. So something like this. And I think I like the purple the most. Now, obviously when you're creating logo designs for clients, you would not follow this process. Reason being it takes a lot more research but when you're doing this as a passion project and you're choosing typefaces it's okay just to go off and do what you want to do it's all about learning from your mistakes and identifying why you're doing what you're doing for example the reason why i'm choosing purple is that it's a good middle ground between the pink and dark purple or the dark blue i like the look of it every typeface is kerned as much as possible but all the kerning and tracking isn't always correct, especially when it comes to logo type design. So the next step is to track and kern this correctly. To someone who's not a designer, this looks perfectly tracked. It looks very nicely done. But to me, as someone who works with logo types and typefaces all the time, I can see there's a few parts in here that aren't correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna alt drag this up to copy it so I have a reference. It's very important to keep a reference of all the work that you've done so you can see where you've gone wrong when you ultimately will at some stage. And it's also nice just to look at when we go back through and see the evolution of a logo. So I'm gonna zoom in, but not too far. And it's important to be quite far away from the logo as well when you're doing this. And we're gonna use a type tool, click inside. And we're gonna use the alt or option and the arrow keys. What this will do is it will change the kerning one step at a time. So I'm gonna make sure that all the type is kerned correctly as it goes through here. So I can see the A looks a bit strange towards the E. So I've moved that in. And then the O, I think I like the look of that. I'm gonna move it in. And don't worry, if it looks a bit strange, you can move it out after. But I'm sort of going through it all, making sure that it works correctly. Then I can zoom out. And if I zoom out, it's a really good way of working out whether your kerning is correct. Now, kerning for a logo type rather than a whole font is so important. And it's actually a bit more important than some people think. Reason being is that font that you're using for that logo has to work as one word. Normally, type designers would do the overall kerning, which is a huge process to do, which is going through every single letter and making sure that the spacing between each letter is relatively the same 
same to our eyes. When it comes to logo type design, it's even more important because we're working on the logo itself and we need to make sure that this is readable when it's small when it's big and that it doesn't look like there's any obvious mistakes for instance here the a as i've looked away is a bit too far in so i'm moving it out but again it looks a bit too far out now so the difference here you can see if i bring this out to you there's a massive difference you may not be able to see it but i've tightened the curling up ever so slightly and this could change in the future now the ultimate thing about typographic logos is to change something about the type and i think there's a lot of creative ways of doing it but you only want to do something subtle logo designs don't really want massive massive changes to them otherwise it just doesn't look modern or professional so there's something that i normally do which is go through a little system the first step i'm going to do is go press command shift and o and that will outline the typography to be shapes the difference between the shapes and the type is now this is no longer editable type so i can't just write something inside it or change the tracking or kerning but i see these as vector shapes now now the first thing i'm going to do is go ahead and bring this arrow down here or this part of it down ever so slightly now i like the slant there and it gives it a bit more of a unique look and all i did was move something ever so tiny down so now that i've got the actual type i've worked out what it should look like this gives me inspiration for the next part which is the icon so whenever i'm creating an icon to go with a logo type i always try to keep it as obvious as possible within the context so for this it is a social messaging platform so it's basically social media it's kind of like whatsapp but i'm just going to go ahead and create a chat bubble and see what we can do with that so my idea would be to create a square kind of like this and create it into a stroke i'm going to up the stroke quite a bit so it matches with the type weight and then i'm going to go ahead and create a chat bubble if possible by going ahead and going to all these corners with my direct selection tool and dragging them in so it goes nice and bubbly. Now I need the chat bubble to come down ever so slightly here so it looks like someone's speaking. So I'm gonna go ahead and press plus, highlight my work here, create another anchor point which will give me a point where I can come down like this and basically create this bubble. And then I'm gonna go ahead and organize this again. So I'm gonna force this to work the way I want it by just editing the bubble slightly and I'm taking the curves away to make it easier for me to edit. Now the problem we have here is the stroke is in the center of our Bezier path. I'm going to go up to stroke up here and then I'm going to go ahead and press align the stroke to the inside because I like the look of it being in the inside more and then I'm going to go ahead and edit it. Now what I'm looking for here is basically an icon-esque way of doing this. So I'm making sure that it looks and fits like an icon and it takes time to do this, but I'm pretty sure most people will be able to identify it quite quickly. Okay, so I like the look of that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change the stroke to go up a bit and I'm gonna scale this down. I'm even gonna just bring this in ever so slightly because I like it to be kind of like that. I want it to be like a very bubbly, minimalistic kind of chat bubble. So you may think that that looks cool and I think it does, but I wanna make sure it works on an app icon. So the first thing I would do is create a square, kind of like so, round the corners, kind of like on Apple, bring this in, making sure it fits within the entirety of it and that kind of works it fits the shape pretty well so i'm going to go ahead and keep that up here as a reference to how well it works inside of an app icon now i want something to be a bit different at the top here on the icon so first thing is i'm going to go ahead and outline the stroke it's going to turn it into a full shape for a second but not without me copying and pasting it because i probably will go wrong at some point so i'm going to highlight this go to object, go down to path, and then outline stroke. And now, as you can see, this is not a stroke, it's got a fill. Reason why I'm doing this is it's easier to put gradients on something like this. And I wanna add a gradient to draw the eye to the icon. So I'm gonna highlight this, and I'm gonna go to window and go to my gradient here, and it'll open up this gradient box. And I'm gonna turn this into this gradient here, which looks awful. Now I'm gonna put in my primary colors by dragging them in from my swatches here, and I want it to be a pink purple like so 
then I use the G tool and I'm going to come down and I can change the gradient however I like, but it's only a subtle gradient. I don't want it to overly distract from the whole concept. So I like this idea here. It works pretty well, but I want to go ahead and edit it and change it into something a bit more creative or just play around with it. So what I do is I'm going to go ahead and copy this and then I'm going to go ahead and take this guy and put it to the left. And obviously that looks a bit strange because the icon is quite big, but I don't want to scale the icon down because I want it to sort of match the same thickness as the typeface. So what I'm going to do is do something a bit weird. and I'm going to drag this down and copy it, rotate it and bring it up. And I'm using symmetry here to do this, to make it look a bit different. And it's creating this chat bubble effect of someone talking and someone talking back to them, which I like. And it doesn't fit perfectly but i don't particularly mind because i think that works even better when it's small and big because it shows that someone's texting and someone's receiving so the next step is to test the icon again into an app icon it's so important that if you're creating a typeface or an icon for an app that is from a larger company that works online to be able to fit it within an app icon natively and well. You don't want to be cramming anything in there. You want it to work perfectly. The app store is a very competitive place and you want to make sure the icon works and that it's identifiable to your brand. So I'm going to go ahead and create another square down here. Make sure it's filled in. Then I'm going to copy these, bring them in, bring them to the front. I'm going to use like a white don't want it on the stroke i want it here so this is kind of like a gray white i'm going to bring this down ever so slightly and in the app icon itself i'm going to change the color to be this gradient just like we did with the other one like so and that works i mean it needs a bit more work doing to it but there you go you've got your placeholder idea right there and i'm going to have the logo be to the side of bemo here and you can go extra crazy with it or extra careful with it but adding guidelines to make sure that the logo is fitting perfectly and these guidelines should be used as often as possible to ensure that the sizing is correct just make sure that when you're scaling this up and down that you hit the correct size. The only problem that you can see here is that it looks a bit strange, the icon it looks a bit too big. And that's because we're next to a big ascending letter, which is this B here, it ascends up. So we really need to just drag this down a bit lower to compensate for that. So it gives the illusion of it being centered to the type. You'll find that a lot of design work and logo design is just optical illusions with sizing to make people have this idea of something to be balanced. So there you go. There is your final idea there. I mean, it's very simple, but the things that you learn when you do it yourself and create icons and logos is massive. If you're someone who's doing the 30 day logo challenge, which I would suggest for anyone to do just for fun, doesn't mean you have to show your work like I'm doing now, but it really does help you understand how quick Quickly, you can come up with ideas that would work. Obviously, this logo needs a lot of work, but it's an idea. And that's the idea behind this video. It's like idea inception. The benefits of doing work like this very quickly, giving yourself a time limit, is that you're able to better come up with ideas sooner and you sort of take away some of the faffing from the process. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to check out logodesign.net who have sponsored this video down in the description below. They've got loads of articles on tutorials that I've done and lots of other professionals. And if you want to take that next step in your logo design career or journey, click the link. If you did enjoy the video, press that red subscribe button. Thank you for watching to the end. If you did watch to the end, just say carrots in the comment so I know. I want to know who's watching to the end. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.